screen. Let me just double check. Yes, I am. Uh, so let's uh, talk about the timer itself. If you look at these two timers here on the left and the right, they're pretty much look the same, but there's one major difference. Can anybody identify the major difference from the one on the left to the one on the right? Well, if you haven't noticed, if you look here, there's two sets of plugs for wires, one at the top here and one at the bottom. Now this one only has one plug at the bottom, and if you see, it's open here. And, and that's not broken, that's just the way the timer is built. Um, if the washing machine or, or, or any appliance that has a timer has a lot of components on there that it has to control, that you still can hear that that noise <laughs> it has the uh, has a lot of components it has to control they have to add more switches within the the timer to control those components and that would go up here so this being an open thing is not that it's broken it's just that it only has one set of switches in the timer now I'm gonna zoom in real quick on this so you can see it a little better but if you look here, this is the plug that's representing all these pins on the timer. And I'll explain to you what they are and how they work in, in, in a minute. But each one of these is a different row in the plug on the timer. We have a row on the very top here. We have a row in the middle. And we have another row down here. So you can see those three rows follow these three rows. And if you look, the the each one of those pins have markings some don't this is white and black white and black uh, this is red this is tan this is yellow and red so that's actually the color of wires that would be on that big plastic plug that plugs onto that timer so that's showing you what color wires go there um, her is hers mic is is off um, Trinity you have two open windows I'm trying, to get it. I'm trying to get it yeah I'm trying to connect on my computer uh, well you're I think you're the one that's causing the feedback and I and I can't mute you either it's not allowing me to um, so going back to the timer here these are the wire colors and you could follow them and a lot of times you read it left to right so if you see these three pins here on the left they would be the far pins here on the left on the timer the ones on the right will be the ones closest to us a couple other things on this timer is this is the timer shaft but this is the back side of the timer the other side is where your knob is connected to it's not showing in, in the picture but when you push or pull the timer knob to turn it on or off, I want you guys next time you get a timer, watch this piece slide up and down. This piece sliding up and down is going to activate the very first switch on, on, the, on the row here. And that's like the master on off switch on the timer. You could actually take your thumb and slide this up and down to open and close that switch. But that's what this piece is doing here. Now this big part in the middle is the timer motor. This is what advances the machine through the cycle. And if you see one plug plugs down here, so it attaches to one of these pins on the timer. And the other one is plugged here, attaching to another pin on the other end of the timer. So let's go to the next slide. So this is the inside of your timer. Each one of these rows right here, and let me see if I get my pen so I can draw on them. Um, each one of these rows right here are the cams. So this is a cam here, this is a cam, this is a cam, this is a cam, go on so forth. Each one of the, well that one no. This is a cam and this is a cam. And right here it's dropped down but right here it's raised up. This piece is in the middle. And I'll explain to you what that, what that means. 
but as the timer advances you can see the teeth here the timer motor uses something called an escapement the escapement is just a set of gears that the timer motor doesn't turn these gears directly they turn a, a small set of gears almost like watch gears and it advances this timer by one click now switches we talked a little bit about switches can anybody remind me uh, when we turn switches on and off do they softly touch or do they have to snap shut really fast and open really fast anybody remember we discussed that uh, about a, the last class and we talked about switches and how they open and close well if you don't remember switches are not designed to open very slowly they snap. yeah they have to snap close really fast I showed a video on the internet last week of a real high voltage switch uh, that the electric company is opening and closing the the switch and you're seeing like lightning bolts flying through the air as the switch is coming apart and every time you open and close a switch the contacts spark and they arc a little bit and when that happens it causes the contacts to burn so let me show you a close-up of some of these contacts and if you look at some of these contacts these contacts uh, Brandon's in welcome Brandon so if you look at these contacts here you can see these contacts are quite burnt and then these contacts here and here are quite shiny um, one the ones that are burnt get used more often and two when a contact opens and closes it has to snap shut and open really fast so what's the point of that well the slower it opens if it's drawing electrical current like through a motor and that switch opens very slowly or closes very slowly it arcs and burns these contacts and then we get a bad timer switch now what what why did I jump from these gears here to the switches is that the way the escapement works you would think that this timer just slowly moves around and around and it doesn't the timer if you ever watched a washing machine timer work they move in what we call increments increments could be anywhere from one minute to three minutes long and it would take one minute for the timer to wind up the gears on the escapement and then it has a spring and then what happens is uh, imagine like uh, like a gun you know how on a, on a revolver you have to pull back on on the on the strike for the bullet and then you pull your trigger and it snaps onto the to the bullet to fo force it the same thing happens with this escapement when the timer motor runs and the escapement starts to turn it's pulling back something similar to like the gun and then once it reaches that one minute that piece slams down and advances the cam one notch so it does not move very slowly it jumps from one increment to the next and I'm going to show you these increments on the timer chart but each one of these is considered an increment which is like steps uh, on the stairs you'd go one step at a time one increment at a time so the cams are here now this piece sitting on top of the cam is called a cam follower so this piece is what activates the switch open and closed inside the timer I know it's a little hard to see but I'm going to uh, try to point it out if we look at this one right here there's a switch contact at the top there's a switch contact here in the middle and right here it's hard to see but there's another one right underneath there's another one down here and there's another one under every one of these every one of these cams has three different points one point at the top one point in the middle and one point at the bottom and this cam follower either pushes it up to this one here or down to this one here or doesn't make any contact at all and I got some better pictures to show you as we move on so if we looked here we got one two three 
four, five, six, seven sets of switches inside the timer. And each one of those would be called cams. Now, those cams do not go horizontally across. In other words, this switch that I circled here does not touch number six next to it, and six doesn't touch five. Each one of those would be all separate switches that control different things in the machine. Now, this one here on the end was the one that I told you when you push and pull the timer knob, and you can sort of see the threads here that the knob goes on right down here. That opens and closes this switch which is your master switch in your timer and I'll show you that in the diagram where that master switch is. So any questions on this before I move on to the to the next part of the timer? You all following me so far? Okay. So let's look at this here. So here I have a drawing of a cam on the timer and this is your cam here. Let me change the color because it's white. So this is our cam, and when the cam rotates, you can see this is what? What was this called? Anybody know what this was called? Follower. Cam follower, yes. So as I rotate the cam, and, and this cam would rotate in this direction. If I go the other way, I'll damage the cam follower. That's why timers can only turn in one direction. And they have raised portions, and they have cutout portions, and they have portions where there's nothing at all. Right now, as you can see, that this switch is not making contact to either one. But the way the timer is set up is the center one is usually where power comes in and then depending on where this follower is if it drops down into this notch right here it's gonna drop down and touch the bottom one and then power is gonna come out the bottom if it comes over here and the cam follows on top of this it's going to push this up and touch the top one and it's going to send power out to a different component now one thing about this timer cam is that they're not designed to close all three switches at the same time. Power comes into the center and either goes out the top or the bottom or it doesn't make contact to any of them at all. So when a timer rotates we have a bunch of them that are all alongside of each other and each one of these switches are going up and down individually from each other. So if we look here at the timer chart, this timer has two sets of plugs on it. It has a plug here, which is a black plug, and it has another plug here, which is a white plug. So that timer would be just like which one of these two plugs, or, or which one of these two timers did you th do you think would be on that chart? Would it be on the one on the left or the one on the right? The left. It, it'd be on the one on the left, left because we have a plug up here and we have a plug down here. So we have two plugs. This one only has one and we have two plugs here. Now, they're numbered 0 through 14, but in the timer, they are odd or even cams. And usually when you look at the timer here, let's go back to this picture. I have to go back and forth to show you that all these up here, let's just assume, are the odd cams and all these are the even cams. So when you look at a timer, we usually read them left to right. So if you're holding the timer facing you, it's left to right. And you're like, well, wait a minute. If I look at it this way, is it left or right here? Or if I flip it upside down, is it left or right there? Um, you're going to have to look at the chart here to try to determine whether it's, it's this way or this way. But what we would do is this would be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. So this one is 15, 13, 11, 9. Those are cam numbers. 
So if that's 1 through 15, down here it would be, we would start with 0. What would the next one be? Two. two. Very good. So they would be all the even cams. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Now let's, let's go back to the chart for a second. So I'm going to be going back and forth. Look here where it identifies the cam, and you see here it has TB. TB means the top of the cam or the bottom of the cam. And if you look at the, at the, at the drawing, we have top and bottom. Well, let's take a look here. Okay, so we numbered the cams, but now we need to identify what they call top and bottom. On this timer, the very row you see here is considered the top. The next row in the middle is either center or middle. And I'll just put C for center. And then the very row down here in the bottom, or the row closest to the timer motor, is considered bottom. Oops, for, what happened to my... My pen just went crazy. It's drawn all over the uh, <laughs> the screen here. Let me uh, go to my mouse here and erase. What the heck happened? It won't even let me erase it. Oh well. Uh, my drawing tool just uh, just went crazy, so I'm gonna have to use the mouse. Um, so um, this here is the bottom because it's the closest to the motor. Now if we were looking at these down here, and, and I'll use this one as a reference only because it's a little bit easier to see, and let me enlarge it for you. I can't, er okay now I can erase those lines. I don't know what happened there. Let's see if I can use my drawing tool again. So let's expand this timer to take a look at this one. Maybe a little bit easier to see. If we look here, we said on the, on the timer on the left here, we said that, that this was um, top, center, bottom. Now if we got three rows here, one row here, one row here, and another row here, which doesn't have very many on it, the middle one is always the center but what do you think this one and this one is? Which one's top and which one's bottom? I'm going to put A and a B just to identify. My drawing tool is having a tough day today. A and B. Which one is the top, A or B? A is the top. A is the top. The top is always the one farthest away from the motor. And my drawing tool just decided it doesn't want to work. I don't know, it's something in, within the software or something. And the bottom here is the one that's always con closest to the motor. A lot of people try to think that the top is because it's up here on the top, but if I flipped it over, it would still be the top. Now the reason why we're identifying top and bottom is because when we look at the pins here, we want to know how do we test this switch? Okay? And the timer motor would be like right here. If I had another one of these switches, I'd have another one down here with a cam follower, and I'd have one upside down if it had two sets of plugs like our timer has. Here's where our switches would be. Excuse my drawing is not the best. But this one is our bottom. This one's our center, and this one's our top, because when it hits a raised portion of the cam, it goes this way to the top. It's just upside down and when we physically look at it. So now when we look at the timer chart here, we have cam 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 14, and we have 0 top, 0 bottom, 1 top, 1 bottom, and Great, now they're right outside my door cutting trees. Um, so when we look at this timer chart here, 
we have to look at these numbers and remember I told you increments so right here the timer chart says each increment is 180 seconds how many minutes is that it's two minutes three minutes three minutes because each second each minute is 60 seconds so in in this chart here it takes three minutes for it to go from increment run to increment two to increment three four and five so these increments here take a little while before they advance now I'm gonna expand on this so I can just explain this chart to you in pieces and then we'll put it all together on the bottom here is the cycles that the timer has the dial this is what the customer would see they would have a white cycle a delicate cycle and a color cycle and then they have some extra options for there but if we look closely right here and I'll, I'll see if I can get the marker to color it in a little bit here is the off position where the machines not supposed to be running another off position another off position and that would be it this off here would be all the way back over here so I can't show you here on the computer but if I was to take this on a piece of paper and hold it in my hand and roll it up into a circle and make this end touch this end in a circle that would be here so if we took a look at this let's say the double wash was the very first portion of the cycle let me erase some of this so I can show you the double wash would be like right here and on the timer we'd have that off position oh, my drawing is horrible but this is the off position the double wash would be like right here and then what comes after the double wash it would say whites until it goes off again so if I go back to the chart here from here to here would be the whites and then we would have another off position right here great job drawing <laughs> So this would go all the way around. What would be the last thing in this area? I'm going to go back to the chart and tell me what would be right here according to that chart. Looking at this chart, what would be in that general area that I circled on this timer right here? What would be here? Now the drawing is not exactly the size. It would be right here, but... What, what would go right here before this off position? I'll leave it open for a second for you to look at it. Would that be the colored colors? It'd be the colors, but if you notice, I didn't, I didn't draw that extra off. I see there's an off right there. There's an extra rinse right here. So it would be extra rinse, and then it would start all over again here to another cycle. So you have one, two, three, four off positions. And then in the cycle, this is called machine function. Machine function tells you what the machine's going to do. So if you turn the dial here or turn the dial here, anywhere within this point, if we look at the, at the timer chart, the actual double wash cycle does not start on the first increment it starts on the second increment in the timer it starts in this increment right here if you notice this is a white line we talked about the dryer timer a little bit about when the heater shuts off at the end of the cycle if it's shaded in it means the switch is closed if it's not shaded the switch is open so look over here at the legend if there's nothing shaded the cam is open 
If it's completely shaded, the cam is closed. Here, if it's like half shaded, that means the cam's closed except for short pauses. And these other ones, don't worry about them. You're not going to really need to know them. Um, but those are the ones that are closed. So if any of you got paper or pen, I want you to take a minute now, and I'm going to highlight the cam for you. What I'd like you to do is try to identify the switches that are closed in cam number two. Two. I'm going to highlight cam number two for you. The first question would be how many switches are closed in cam two? The second one would be what switch is closed in cam two? I'm sorry, I'm saying cam, I meant increment two. My, my, my mistake. So the first question is how you many can't. how many switches are closed right now? One. Well, anywhere you see it shaded black in that Jeez. increment, there's five. There's five. There's five. I got one, two, six. three, four, eight, five. Six, six and seven. Six. This one here is not closed. Oh, okay. I didn't see that one. So I'm just going to erase and leave only the ones that are closed highlighted. Well, I'll just highlight them separately because it's hard for that eraser's too big. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven switches that are closed right now. When you start that washing machine, turn the dial, that's the first thing that's going to close inside that timer. Now, someone give me a switch that is closed. That's a trick question, though. Take a minute before you answer. A switch that is closed? Chief, top three. Wash one. fail. Okay. Um, could you repeat the question? Okay, it's a trick question, so think about it. What? Oh. Give me one switch that is closed out of those seven. Now, ask for switch. XR That's the trick. I'm sorry? Zero top. Okay. Zero top. Zero top is closed, but zero top is what? Is the cam now it's not a cam mm -hmm. there is a switch in that cam but the actual switch is L1 to 44 like I said it was L1 a trick question 40. I'll show you first of all cam 0T okay that is the line switch that is the one that I was showing you at the beginning when you push and pull the timer knob that piece slides up and down on the timer. Now if you look, the black one are all the even cams and the white one are all the odd cams, so it's cam 0T. So if you were to look at the timer and you're like, man, I gotta check that switch, but look at all those pins, I don't, I don't know where to test. Well, 0T is the cam. If we look here, this is zero. And look at the here, they put TCB, top, center, bottom there. You're always going to check from the center to the top or the center to the bottom. That's how you're going to check it. Remember our, our timer here was always from the center to the top or center to the bottom. That's how we test them. So what two color wires are we going to test on that cam 0T? What two color wires? This is cam zero right here. Yellow to... Yeah. It's not yellow. Gray, right? gray and black. Actually, it's black gray. and black. Because this is center, so this is my center one. 
And this is my top. They're both black wires there. And you notice how it says circuit L1 to 44? You see the L1 and the 44 there? It's not this L1 gray because it's not the zero or top that's the bottom and if you look we don't even use it here the same thing with cam number one it, there's a switch there but it's not being used there's no wires on it and if you look here at cam number one there's no wires here so you can find these two like how do i put my meter on that timer to test it and you would look at this plug you go zero t l1 to 44 you'd use this chart here l1 to 44 or two black wires you find the plug and one end don't have black wires, the other end does, that's how you would know. These are the two pins. You unplug that plug, and you can see those same two pins on the timer, and that's where you put your meter. Now, the question I asked earlier was what switch was closed. I said L1 to 44, and you're like, huh? Well, let's go to the diagram here. And I'm going to expand it a little bit just to that one portion so you can see it better. Let me just make this bigger because this thing is huge. And... We got right here a zero. That zero means cam zero. If you look over here, we got 14. This is cam 14. This is cam number three. This is cam number nine. Cam number 13. And look, they're showing top and bottom. This is just 14 bottom. There's no 14 top. They will not put a 14 top somewhere else on the diagram. If there was, it would be right here. So this is 13 top, or this is 3 top, I'm sorry, and this is 13 top and bottom. But over here, you see the gray and black click together, and this is the other black. Look at the 44 right here, and the L1 right here. This is that switch in that timer chart. Do you see how I take the timer chart and then go to the diagram? Mm -hmm. and put it there now let's go to the next switch and identify it now number cam number one's not being used so let's go over here to cam number two I'm just gonna erase it a little bit now before I go into explaining it too much notice that this one's closed for three increments then it opens for two and the top one closes for two increments then the bottom one closes and the top one closes you'll never see the top and the bottom of the same cam closed at the same time like I showed you in this picture it either touches the top one the bottom one or nothing all three don't close at the same time and that's the same thing with all of these cams and these switches so what switch is closed here this one here being 30 21 21 to 30 very good so now what cam is that how would you tell someone oh it's uh, two 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 bottom two bottom oh wait a minute now if I look at two mm -hmm. bottom this is two here I have a brown wire here I have no mm -hmm. wire here. <laughs> Sometimes internally in the machine, this pin may be connected to that one, but there's no wire going there. So even though you don't see a wire color here, this is to bottom. And you will see, mm -hmm. you will see a pin right there when you unplug it, and you'll see a pin right here. This is where you're going to put your meter to test that switch. So let's go to the diagram and see if we can find two bottom, 21 to 30. Now, if you look at the function here, it's saying what? Reversing, agitate. Reversing, agitate. I, I'm sorry, can you repeat that, Jonas? No, I was saying reversing, agitate. Yeah, reverse, agitate, and then reversing, spin. Um, so you're not gonna have spin and agitate ever on at the same time. So we know that this is gonna be controlling our motor. This is for agitation and for spin. So that's cam two bottom, 
21 to 30. So let's go and find that. So I'm going to have to move the, di the diagram a little bit so we can see it. And if we go here, here's our cam 2. Which one am I going to connect? Up here or down here? Down. Down. So the switch is down. making contact to here because it says 2B. And that's 21. And the other number was 30, 30, which is way over here. But if we followed that, remember these bold lines? We talked about the bold lines and diagram mean they're inside the timer. Notice that 2B and 4B are going to the same terminal on the timer. And that actually would be a blue wire here. There's another 30 here. So there's actually three switches sharing that blue wire. So if we go back to our chart here, you see this blue wire? There's one, mm -hmm. two, there's no wire here, but believe it or not, all three of these inside the timer are connected together. Let me show you what that means. So one wire may come into this pin right here, but then Inside this plastic, there may be a piece of metal connecting to this one and a piece of metal connecting to this one. So instead of putting three wires, they just put one wire and it's connected to here and here internally in the timer. Now when we check the switches, we don't check this one to this one. We would check this bottom one to the one above it. But it would then come back out and use the wire over here off of another cam. So it's just for them to, to reduce the amount of wires that they have running in the machine. So if we, I know this is a little complicated and we'll have to do a little bit more on this. But let's keep going down. So the next switch that's closed is this one here. And that is the extra rinse. So this is going to be for our water valve. That's switch L1 to XR, and that's cam 3T. So we're going to go over here to this cam here, and that's L1 to XR. There's a switch to these two, and that's center to top. If we look at three, it's center to top. Bottom has nothing. Now let's go find that switch, 3T. Now 3T is all the way by the water valve, so I have to move the chart again. And 3 was this one right here. Now, it was sort of easy to find those switches on the diagram by using the timer chart. And the wiring diagram was very nice of, of them to share the cams on the diagram. Manufacturers don't always do that. They give you a switch number and the cam is on the chart but not on the wiring diagram. So we could find this switch either by saying this switch right here that I have circled is 14B but another way to describe that switch would say L1 to 11 from here L1 to 11 what would one other way, if you were talking to a fellow technician and they want to check that switch and they didn't have 14B or they didn't have the L1 to 11, what would you tell them to test to check that switch? And you said this was for the water valve? Well, no, that was cam three. I'm, 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 I'm over here on cam fourteen right now, and I said if you wanted to oh, tell okay. someone check the switch, you could say, oh, check fourteen B, or you could say check L one to eleven. That'd be the same switch. What one other way could you tell them to check that switch, or how would you tell them to check that switch? Ye yellow to blue. Very good. Yellow to blue. Is that blue or purple? I. Think that might be purple, but you are right. Uh, uh, 
Yeah. It right. looks like it might be purple. It's 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 hard to tell. Yeah, it's the blue diagram, further down. <laughs> the diagram's a little bit obscure. But if we go back to the timer chart, and we said 14 bottom, right? Uh, no, 14 bottom would be here. It's yellow, and I guess it's purple right here. So it's L1 to 11, 14 bottom, or yellow to purple. So let me give you guys a little task to do. Let's see how much of this you guys can follow. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and then you're going to use the chart to see if you can answer the question. Let me just make the chart the full screen so you can see the whole chart. I'll try to make it as large as possible, but small enough to fit on the whole entire screen. Okay. First question. The color cycle, and I'll highlight that for you down here in the bottom. What is the machine doing in increment number 54? No, I'm sorry, 53. Let me say 53. Increment 53. I'll type it out there. What is the machine? Doing doing? Once. It's what? Reverse agitate. The fill and rinse. It's fill and rinse. Reverse agitate is a function which is these are all the things that the machine's going to do, as well as these here. But if I say increment fifty three we would go here, this is 50, this is 55, this would be 51, 52, 53, and we'd come down here and file this line down, and it's hard to do when you're looking at it on the screen. And actually, isn't it the spin just before it? This would be 50, this line here. So this is 51, 52, 53. It's actually the spin cycle. So it's a little hard. It's, it's just finishing the spin. And it's going to take three minutes, and it's going to go to the fill rinse. Does everybody see that? Yes, no, maybe. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. I got yes. another question. This is just testing you to see. Um, what's going on here? This wash cycle from here to here, this portion of the wash cycle, how many minutes does it run in this wash cycle? Nine. Nine minutes. And we get that by saying there's one, two, three two. increments. Each two. increment we said was 180 seconds three. so that's three minutes per increment so three times three is nine minutes very good now if you are going to look at this diagram let's take a look at this diagram for a second oops I'm sorry I didn't want to draw on it I wanted to move it we're looking at this diagram right and the uh, let me, let me find what I want to find here so I can ask the question properly. That the, uh, the motor was not working, right? And we were in mm -hmm. the spin cycle. Now, you know what? I'm not going to do that. That one's a little bit too difficult yet. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me go back to the chart. I'm not going to go with that question yet. Okay. So... Let's say we're in the wash cycle here. We're in, the, we're, we're in one of these increments. Let's say the one in the middle, right? What timer switch out of all of these here will control water coming into the machine? Um, 
XR to 12. Very good. XR to 12. That's the timer switch. That says wash fill. Notice for rinse fill, it's only highlighted here. And if we file them down, they're during all the rinse cycles. Okay? The wash fill, if we file it here and here, this is every time the machine's going to wash. It is closed. Okay? Now, X1 to, X1 or XR to 12, I'm sorry, if we just go to the diagram, let's just find that. XR to 12. Now, that's going to be hard to find, right? Does, does that way, right? So an easier way to find it on their diagram would be go by cam, and that would be what? 13 top. 13 so if we go here to this diagram here, 13 top would be here. Here's 12. And we go here. Here's XR. So this is that switch that closes for the machine to fill for wash. Now, the next question. How many switches are closed in this wash cycle? Seven. Correct, seven, but we're only using six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but this one here is not being used. All right, so it, there's seven switches in the timer that are actually closed, but we're not using that switch in the machine. Now, I'm going to do something here. I'm, I'm going to be sneaky. <laughs> Let me, uh, what cam is that? I did it on purpose. I hid the cam so you guys can't see them. Remember, they were numbered 0, 1, 7. It's 7. Now the next question, is that 7 top or 7 bottom? 7 bottom. It's 7 bottom. If you look at the cams, you don't always have to go all the way back here to the left to see these numbers, once you see them and you know the numbers are there, we can go over here and if, I, if I'm looking at this switch right here, yeah, I can go all the way back and say, oh, that's 10B. Or if I knew that they were numbered 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, whatever, and I went to here, if you notice they have a big white space separating cam 10 from cam 9, cam 8, and this is going to be the top of it and the mm -hmm. bottom of it here. So it's a little bit easier once you start identifying them. This is CAM 10 and CAM 10B. So that's how we find them there. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the diagram. Sir, sir, why is the 7 missing on the, on the chart? Let me go back and take a look. I do not know why seven is missing. Let's take a look at the at the diagram here. Odd number. Uh, seven is here, mm -hmm. and it's L one red and yellow. And I think was that an M? And that would be cam seven. Let's go to the diagram. And I'll have to zoom out so we can see the whole diagram. This thing was huge when I put it, pasted it on here, so I tried to like stretch it out so you guys can see it the most. The reason why it's not on the chart is because we don't have we're not using cam seven in the entire machine. Even though it shows a red and yellow wire or whatever the two color wires are, there's zero, there's three, nine, thirteen, fourteen, two, four, six, ten, twelve, and eight. 
there is no 7 on the diagram. So since they're not using that cam on the diagram, it's not in the chart. And it's just the way the manufacturer drew it. Now, give me a second here. I just wanted to show you guys one other chart. Let me just go into uh, my folder here. My computer would like to... I don't know why I put, I put more memory in my computer and it still seems like it's not going too fast. Uh, I have a book here. Let me just open it up and get it to the page for you. I want to show you another timer chart from a different manufacturer and show you similarities and comparisons to this one here. I thought, okay. Okay, so this is a Whirlpool timer chart. Now, if you, f you see here, these are timer switch numbers. These are what the machine switches are going to do, and these are the colors. There are no cams listed on that timer chart. So when you go to look at the wiring diagram, you're going to have to figure out where it is on the actual timer. And you're like, well, wait a minute. You're not giving me the cams. How do I know where I put my meter on the timer? What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to figure out what color wires make up that switch. And you're going to have to look at the wires going to the timer and find those two color wires like we did on on this one here where you looked at the plug and I said that this plug has a yellow and a red wire here and you're gonna have to find those wires well if we look at our timer chart they give us a blue or a tan but they're not giving us the two wires either they're only giving us one wire this is red to white blue to orange light blue but that's not blue to orange that's blue with an orange tracer that means it's a blue wire and has an orange line on it so let's take a look at this diagram for a second and show you how the Whirlpool one works. And if you look here, they, they're showing you the connection of the timer switch. This timer switch number 16352. Let's just go ahead and take 5, which is blue. If you look at the diagram, here's switch number 5. And they are numbered on the diagram, so you know that this switch is that switch. Here's the blue wire, but if I asked you to check switch number five, that's only one wire blue. What other wire would you check when you're putting your meter leads? Because you need two color wires to check a switch. You need the blue one. What is the other wire that makes up that switch number five? If we followed it. Is that orange black? Uh, no, actually, if we follow blue this way, and it's heavy line, so this is all internal in the timer, and come on down, it comes to what color wire here? Tan? Tan. So you'd have to find the tan wire and the blue wire on that timer plug to check switch 5. No cams listed. So I showed you how the Maytag cam went together, and I, and I showed you that one on first, so it's easier for you to identify the chart with the diagram, but the Whirlpool doesn't do it that way. And every manufacturer has a different way of showing their diagrams. Now if we looked back at this timer chart here, here, these are our increments, also known as timer steps. They don't tell you how much time each increment is. On the most part, most manufacturers, an increment is usually one minute long. Uh, so how long, if it's one minute long, is the entire normal wash cycle from here to here? How long is this entire cycle? Six. 
15 minutes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, maybe 16, if you count each one. Now, that means that that cycle is 15 minutes long. Well, washing machines take a half an hour to run. How could it be a 15 minute cycle? Even if I went from here and added the super wash, like which is like an extra wash to this cycle where it started at zero and it ended on 21, that'd be only 21 minutes. Well, here's something that you have to know about the diagram. This is our timer motor here. Okay, now let's take a look at at this diagram here. This is, uh, I want to go to the whole diagram without the chart. Okay, here's our timer motor. Right? When you first turn on a machine and throw your clothes in, is the machine empty or full of water at this time? It's empty. It's empty. It starts to fill with water. So if we looked at this circuit, and mm -hmm. you know, I'm trying to throw in the circuits here, a little bit easier to read than that Maytag one, and file this down. Number two is not closed right now. And we go down through here, and then the machine's empty. It's going to start filling with water. It sends power to the water valves, and they go out. Well, my timer motor's up here. And if I file the timer motor back, switch number two is not closed. And this switch, which is what we call the water level switch, is not closed either from V to T. So while the machine's filling, the timer motor itself is not getting power. It's just sitting there. Anybody know why they do that? Because of the difference in the fill speed pressure. It's difference in water pressure and water levels because the older machines you could put low, medium, and high. And down here in Florida, we have people that live out in like farmlands as well as city. And some of those farmlands don't use city water. They have a well pump, so the water pressure is not that high. I've seen the customer's machine take 20 or 30 minutes just to fill up with water before it could wash. Well, if the cycle is only 20 minutes long, and it took 30 minutes to fill water, the timer would shut off before the water ever came in. <laughs> so what happens is the timer mm -hmm. does not advance while the machine's filling. Now, if you look at this circuit here, they highlighted these circuits that the switches are closed. And I'm going to put this book in an email. I would like you guys, if you get the opportunity to go through this book, and try to trace this circuit of how electricity flows through. And if switch number two is not closed, you don't go through. And if it goes here, if this is not closed, you go down. Now, just so you know, this is page nine. Well, page 10 has the answer for you. I'd like you to attempt to do it without looking at the answers. And then after you do it, look at the answers. If you have the ability to print, print just the odd pages so you can do the assignment and then go back on the computer and check your answers. What I want to start working on is you guys tracing the circuit and find out what components are active. Now if you look, once you go through this, what I know this is a water valve, but what what is the description of this part when we when we talk about parts of a diagram, one is path, one is control, one is load, one is source. What is this part? This part is one of those four. Which one is it? It's a load. It's, it's a control. load. So once you go through the load, do not go here and then go back through another oh, load. Once you go back. through a load, go all the way mm. back to the power source. Now this book that I'm going to put in an email mm has washing machine diagrams, it has dryer diagrams, which we've been talking about a little bit. They tell you here what switches to close. Some of them they close for you automatically. But we have closed the timer switches for you. With your pencil, trace the active circuits below with a wavy line. So what you want to do is just take a pencil and draw a line and say, okay, the power goes through here and it goes through here and out. And then you go to the next page and they say, this is how power is flowing through here now. So the next class that we meet, what I want to do 
is I first want to entertain anybody have a question say you know I did this but you know I drew through this one but the diagram says it doesn't go through this one why and ask me questions why or or anything else that you have pertaining to the diagram so we have washers dryers um, we have refrigerator diagram simple ones then we get to a little more complicated refrigerator diagrams with defrost cycles we get into um, this is a dishwasher wiring diagram this one is a microwave this one really is not that good they don't even show the whole microwave they just showed the control section of it um, then we have uh, air conditioning switches wall, wall and window AC and then air conditioners yes go ahead did you give us an assignment that looks like this before they out something? I think so, too. Did I? Uh, yeah, I think so, but I just couldn't do it because I don't have to trace. I bought the tracing. That was the right. beginning of the class, I believe. Yeah. I might have sent it out just before we started, um, but I don't think I ever went over the assignment with oh. you. I'll, I'll send it out again. Okay. Um, did I also send you guys the basic electricity book number two that had all the electrical symbols on it? I'll oh. show you. Um, okay, let me let me open up that book too to so you can see it. That's this book here. And this book showed you all the symbols oh, okay. and what the symbols were for the wiring diagram. Now we discussed some of this in our last class and I copied and pasted some of these into the dot into the this presentation. And then here it had actual questions that you had to answer. Did you guys get this? Not this one, no. No. Okay, so I'll I'll send them both back out in the group email. And just so you know, don't don't go to the answers right away, but the back of the book has all the answers. And remember, cheating only only hurts you as far as you know learning, but uh, you know attempt to do the answer first one thing about this I just want you to know it's this is relatively simple I'll just go over the first answer with you oh it also tells you what the color codes are in a wiring diagram with the letters okay BR to W is brown with a white tracer and if you guys are doing any of these assignments write them down so we have our next class I can answer your questions but here's number one just to show you as example of how to do it a wiring diagram is similar to a road map. The lines on a road map show you where your car can travel. The lines on a blank diagram show you where electric current can travel. What do you think the answer is? It's right there. The answer is wiring. It, it's simple. Um, but when we get further down, they actually have you try to draw a circuit or identify components in a circuit. They show you what a switch is, what a bulb is. Um, we did a little bit of this in the last basic electricity class. But here, showing you an open switch or a closed switch. This is showing you a resistor or a heater. So these are identifying the symbols that you will see on wiring diagrams. Um, one, one. Is there a way to figure out like? Uh, because I understand issues we have is uh, figuring out the behavior of a circuit, depending on the on the kind of component. Because I remember you saying one time that okay, if this is higher resistance. It may affect the path of electricity the other way. So some components like a thermistor or a resistor can behave, can make the circuit behave, or an inductor can make the circuit differently. Well, um, um, thermistors, oh, thermistors um, they are sensors that are connected directly to a control board. So the only time you will find things like that, and they have these circuits in this assignment that I'm giving you, in the dryer diagram, we have like two paths the timer motor can go, through this switch or through the power resistor. Now if I go through here, obviously it's putting two resistors in series, and then actually it goes through the heating element also. It's actually three resistors in series. But if I close this switch, the electricity for the timer will not go through it and bypass it. 
it it won't go through these two resistors because it's what we call the path of least resistance. So there are certain circuits and appliances. It's not used that often, but there are circuits to go. And I think I talked about this power resistor circuit um, in this presentation here. This is the same presentation that we've been using. And I talked about the timer motor and I talked about the cycling of the thermostat, whether it goes through here. Um, that was in the last class and that should be in the video. But go ahead and let's do those assignments mm. in, in, in the, uh, um, on these two uh, packages I send you. And then I will go through each one and explain them to you. Why does it go here or there? Everything is not always the same. You know, each one has its own reasoning why it does that. Here the buzzer has very high resistance. So if this switch goes here when the motor's running, the buzzer only buzzes at the end of the cycle. Well, why does it do that? Well, electricity goes right around through here and will bypass that buzzer because there's zero resistance from here. A buzzer has 2,000 ohms. So in the next class, I'll, I'll go over that again. Um, but if you guys can practice these diagrams and then as you go through each one of the diagrams, if you find something that has resistance, say, well, why didn't it go this way? Why did it go that way? Then I can go over specific instances and explain to you why it's doing that. Did, did I sort of answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's something that you're going to have to just take your time and go through these diagrams and we're going to practice some more diagrams and we're going to we're going to get more into it. I was looking at the um, at the course here that we had and we've done this the pictorial and schematic symbols and we started reading diagrams. I'm right here in the basic electricity class where we're doing diagrams, the legends and timer charts. We haven't gone through the meters and the testing, uh, actually testing on machines, and then actual theory of troubleshooting and how do we approach troubleshooting. So we started here. We're only this far into this class. Okay. So right now I want you to, to be proficient at reading the diagrams and tracing the circuits and identifying why current flows one way or the other. And then if you have some questions, I'd be more than happy to go over that. I don't want to go too fast and try to cover too much material at one time. Does anybody have any other questions? Yes, I do have a question. Okay. Um, for my fellow classmates. Um, Mr. Wick sent a document last week. I wonder if anybody had a chance to download it. I'm trying to, but I can't. If anybody does it, can I have a copy of it, please? What document did I send? Oh, the it? practice test. Oh, um, yeah, that's a zip file. So it's a folder with a bunch mm -hmm. of files in it. That was that PSA certification. I told everybody I'd send it out. But I was having problem for some reason. Uh, my email was thinking that I was sending a virus or something it wasn't allow me to send it um, I could send you different pieces of that and you'd have to download it put it all into one folder and then you could actually run it as an application if if you're unable to do that but it'd have to be sent in multiple emails and pieces uh, and then what you'd have to do is save each one of those files into a folder and then you can click on the application and run it did any of you guys Try to run that program, the PSA certification test. I can't. I tried, but I can't. Okay. Uh, what version of Windows are you on, though? I think Windows 10. Yes. I think I told everybody if you're on a newer version of Windows, I think the people that created this exam did an older DOS version of this, and it does not operate on Windows 10. It have to be run on a. Hey Rick, old... I tried it on uh, Windows. I tried it on Windows ninety eight, and it will not load. It will not load. You know what? Let me contact yeah, it them. It won't even come up. I'm gonna contact them this week. Now, there's two. There's two files that say student. 
and the one that's the actual application file is the file that will run the program. So if you yeah, it wouldn't even come up. But you were able to download and extract it and see all the files in the folder. No. No. No, I couldn't see anything. Nothing. I I tell you what I'll do. No. I'll buy some cheap thumb drives. And if you email me your personal, uh, you know, mailing address, I'll put this file on a thumb drive and mail you guys the ones that are here in the class. Uh, if you request me, just individually email me. Say please send me the PSA jump drive. Okay. I'll. I'll load it onto a thumb drive, and I will personally mail it to you, uh, the uh, the test on a thumb drive. And you can run it right from the thumb drive. You don't have to install it on a computer. In class, we, we just plug a oh, thumb drive okay. into it, and it runs from the thumb drive. But what I'm going to do Monday is I'm going to contact PSA. Uh, I'm, I'm close personal friends with them. I'm going to contact them and ask them if they have an updated version of the practice test. Or something they can provide me that I could also share with you. Thank you, Rick. You are the best. I try. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions, guys? Thank you, sir. No. no. If no. not, then then we'll uh, end the class I... today, and I will email out the books uh, right after we hang up. I will create a batch folder and send those files in a folder to you. Thank you, Mr. 